what do you mean by romanticism the american scholar a o love joy once observed that the word romantic has come to mean so many things that by itself it means nothing at all the variety of its actual and possible meaning and connotations reflect the complexity and multiplicity of european romanticism the word romanticism has a complex and interesting history in the middle ages romance denoted the new vernacular language is derived from latin in contrast distinctions to latin itself which was a language of learning and romancer romancer romance meant to compose or translate books in the vernacular in britain and france romance had acquired the derogatory connotations of fanciful bizarre exaggerated chimerical in france a distinction was made between romance pure that means derogatory and the romantic which means tender gentle sentimental and sad it was used in english form in these latter senses in the 18th century in germany the word roman uh, romantis was used in the 17th century in the french sense of romance scale second and then increasingly from the middle or the 18th century in english sense of gentle melancholy what is romantic period or romantic revival the word loosely applied to a moment in european literature during the quarter of the 18th century and the first 20 or 30 years of the 19th century it was marked by a rejection of the ideas and rules of classicism and neoclassicism and by an affirmation and the need for a free freer more subjective expressions of passion pathos and personal feelings by an affirmation of the need for a freer more subjective expression of passion pathos and personal feelings as it's narrowest the romantic period in britain is usually taken to run between 1798 the year in which william wordsworth and st coleridge book lyrical plus lyrical ballad was published the first editions of lyrical ballads has given the fire to this very moment romantic period in britain is usually taken to run between 1798 98 and 1798 the year in which coleridge and words were published the first edition of lyrical ballads and 1832 when sir walter scott and goth died and the reform bill was passed the major british writers in the period apart from coleridge wordsworth and scott were byron shelley keats jane austen hazlitt and de quincey abroad the moment was widely embracing goth shelgel wackenroder tx scaling novels and holderlin in germany Chateau Briand and Madame de Stael in France, Leopardi, Manjoni and Foscolo in Italy, Aspron Seda in Spain, Slovas Slovakia in Poland, Poskin and Lermontov in Russia, Patofi in Hungary, and Olens Keller in Denmark. So my dear students with the help of William J Long book history of English literature
we would like to go to the 18th century and discuss the early romantics william blake 1757-1827 you already have you have already learnt the book the poem tiger tiger burning bright in the forest of the night william blake has written one more poem a very beautiful poem he has written so many poems but i would recite our one poem of william blake piping down the valleys while piping songs of pleasant glee on a cloud i saw a child and he laughing said to me say try to understand he is a lyricist the poet william blake is a lyricist piping down the valleys while piping songs of pleasant glee on a cloud i saw a child and he laughing said to me pipe a song pipe a song about a lamb so i piped with merry cheer piper pipe that song again piper pipe that song again so i piped he wept to hear piper sit thee down and write piper sit thee down and write in a book that all may read piper piper sit thee down and write in a book that all may read so he vanished from my sight and i plucked a hollow reed and i made and i made a rural pen and i stained the water clear and i wrote my happy songs and i wrote my happy songs every child may joy to hear and i wrote and i wrote my happy songs every child may joy to hear so this is the poem taken from songs of innocence my dear students of all the romantic poets of the 18th century william blake is the most independent and the most original in his earliest work written when he was scarcely more than a child he seems to go back to the elizabethan song writers for his models piping down the well is why piping songs so pleasantly on a cloud i saw a child and he laughing said to me pipe a song about a lamb pipe a song about a lamb so i piped with merry cheer you know he has written the poem the lamb and the tiger did he made the same did he made this he is it means uh, did he made the same who made the tiger made the lamb pipe a song about a lamb so i piped with merry cheer pipe or pipe that song again so i piped he wept to hear of all the romantic poets of the 18th century william blake is the most independent and the most original in his earliest work written when he was scarcely more than a child he seems to go back to the elizabethan song writers for his models but for the greater part of his life he was the poet of inspiration alone following no man's lead and obeying no voice but that which he heard in his own mystic soul though the most extraordinary literary genius of his age he had practically no influence upon it indeed we hardly yet understand this poet of pure fancy this mystic this transcendental madman who remi- who remained to the end of his busy life in incomprehensible child william blake the son of a london tradesman William Blake the son of a London tradesman was a strange imaginative child who soul was more at home with brooks and flowers and fairies than with the crowd of the city streets beyond learning to read and write he received no education but he began at 10 years to copy prints and to write verses he also began a long course of art study which resulted in the publishing his own books adorned with marginal engravings colored by hand an unusual setting worthy of the strong artistic sense that saw itself in many of his early verses 
as a child he had visions of god and angels looking in at his windows and as a man he thought he received visits from the souls of the great dead moses virgil homer dante melton majestic shadow gray but luminous majestic shadows gray but luminous he calls them he seems never to have asked himself the question how far these visions were pure illusions but believed and trusted them implicitly to him all nature was a vast spiritual symbolism wherein he saw elves fairies devils angels all looking at him in friends friendship or enmity through the eyes of the flower and the stars with the blue sky spread over with wings and the mild sun that mounts and sings with trees and fields full of fairy elves and little devils who fight for themselves with angels planted in hawthorn bowers and bowed himself in the passing hours and this curious fantastic conception of nature was not a matter of creed but the very essence of blake's life strangely enough he made no attempt to found a new religious cult but followed his own about milton he said majestic shadows gray but luminous works of william blake the poetical sketches published in 1783 is a collections of blake's earliest poetry much of it is written in boyhood it contains much crude and innocent work but also a few lyrics of striking originality two later and better known volumes are songs of innocence and songs of experience reflecting to widely different views of the human soul as in all his works there is an abundance of apparently worthless stuff in these songs but in the language of miners it is all padded it shadows gleams of golden grains and away our shifting and now and then we find in exit unexpectedly my lord was like a flower upon the brows my lord was like a flower upon the brows of lusty may ah life as frail as flower my lord was like a star in the highest heaven drawn down to earth by spells and witness my lord was like a opening eye of the day and he is darkened like the summer moon clouded fallen like the stately tree cut down the breath of heaven dwelt among his leaves on account of the chaotic character of most of the blake's work it is well to begin our our reading with a short book of select selecting containing the best songs of these three little volumes swinburne's call calls blake the only poet of supreme and simple poetic genius Swinburne calls William Blake the only poet of supreme and simple poetic genius of the 18th century the one man of that age fit on all accounts to rank with the old great masters the praise is doubtless extravagant and criticism somewhat intemperate but one we have had that the evening star memory night love to the muses spring summer the tiger the lamb the cloud and the pebble we may possibly share swinburne's enthusiasm certainly in these three volumes we have some of the most perfect and the most original songs in our language my dear students to read any of these works casually is to call the author a madman to study them remembering blake songs and his genius is to quote softly is on answer to the child who asks about the land of dreams of what land is the land of dreams of what land is the land of dreams what are its mountains and what are its streams of what land is the land of dreams what are its mountains and what are its streams oh father oh father oh father 
I saw my mother there among the lilies by water's fair. Oh, what land is a land of dreams? Oh, what land is a land of dreams? What are its mountains and what are its streams? Oh, Father, I saw my mother there among the lilies by water's fair. Dear child, I also by pleasant streams have wandered all night in the land of dreams. But though calm and warm the waters wide, I could not get to the other side. I could not get to the other side. Of what land is the land of dreams? What are its mountains and what are its streams? Oh, Father, I saw my mother there among the lilies by waters fair. Dear child, I also by pleasant streams have wandered all night in the land of dreams. But though my calm and warm the water side, I could not get to the other side. Minor points of the revival. We have chosen the five preceding poets. Gray, Thomas Gray, Goldsmith, Cowper, Burns and Blake as the most typical and the most interesting of the writers who proclaimed the dawn of Romanticism in the 18th century. So my dear, there are the five poets. Thomas Gray, Goldsmith, William Cowper, Robert Burns and William Blake as the most typical and the most interesting of the writers who proclaimed the dawn of Romanticism in the 18th century. With them we associate a group of minor writers whose works were immensely popular in their own day. The ordinary readers will pass them by but to the students they are all significant as expressions of very different phases of the Romantic revival. James Thompson, William Collins, George Crave, James Macpherson, Thomas Chatterton, Thomas Percy, and there were some other novelists also. So, my dear students, Daniel Defoe, the greatest, one of the greatest novelists, and his work, Robinson Crusoe, seventeen. Journal of the Plague Year and his memories of Cavalier. Robinson Crusoe as a Batter Treatise, Samuel Richardson, then the Henry Fielding. We find some of the romantic elements in these authors too. This period, the period we are studying is included between the English revolutions of 1688, that means I am talking about the 18th century. Uh, and the French revolutions of 1789. But the impact of the French revolution was on romantic poet too much. The literature of the century is remarkably complex, but we may classify it all under three general heads, the reign of so-called classicism, the revival of romantic poetry, and the beginning of the modern novel. The first half of the century especially is an age of proge, proge and region, which we called owing largely to the fact that the practical and social interest of the age demanded expression. Modern newspapers like the Chronicle, Post and the Time. The literary magazine like the Tatler and the Spectator. So you are learning in this William Blake and other the revival of romantic poetry, the meaning of romanticism, the life and works of Thomas Gray, of Oliver Goldsmith, famous as for the dramatist and novelist, William Cowper, 
of Robert Burns, the greatest of Scottish poets of William Blake, the mystic and the minor poets of the early Romantic movement, James Thompson, William Collins, George Crabbe, James Macpherson, author of the Ocean Poems, Thomas Chatterton, the boy who originated the Rowley Papers, and Thomas Percy, whose work for literature was so to collect the old ballads, which he called the relic of ancient English poetry, and to translate the stories of Norse mythology in Northern antiquities. The first English novelist, the meaning and the history of the modern novel, the life and work of Daniel Defoe, author of Robinson Crusoe, who is hardly to be called a novelist, but whom he placed among the pioneers and the novels of the Richardson Fielding, Smollett, Stern, and Goldsmith. So this is just to apprise you about this thing. Now the age of Romanticism, which started 1800 to 1850. So we'll be interacting now on the main age of Romanticism.